Hey, this is Chris Plush from CG Masters, and in this two-part tutorial series, I'm going to teach you how to create a basketball. In this first part, we're just going to do the modeling and the UV unwrapping. The second part will be about texturing and rendering it in cycles. So to get started, first let's go to the File menu, go to the User Preferences, and then the Add-ons tab. We're going to enable the add-on called Add Mesh Extra Objects. So just make sure that box is checked. Then close that. And we enabled that because there's a specific kind of sphere called a polysphere that it allows us to use. So now press Shift and A and add a mesh polysphere. Now if you go into edit mode of the polysphere, you'll see it's not what you're used to when using icospheres or UV spheres. Everything here is a lot more uniform. I mean, I know an icosphere is pretty much perfectly uniform because it uses triangles that are all the same size and whatnot, but that's really really difficult to use when modeling something like this. But this, this gives us everything we need because we're going to be creating those valleys in the basketball. And this already has our vertical loop cuts set up for us and our horizontal loop cuts set up for us and the beginning of our diagonal loop cuts. So what we're going to do now is because a basketball is pretty much just one single quadrant mirrored on all axes, we're going to delete any excess vertices here from the front view and the top view so we're just left with the top left quadrant. This is what we're going to be working on and we're going to add a mirror modifier for it so that it's mirrored on all axes and gives us the perfect sphere in the end. So go to the modifiers buttons and add a mirror modifier mirrored on the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So it creates a perfect sphere out of that single quadrant. Alright, wonderful. Now let's add another modifier, a subsurf modifier on levels two or three. Now let's start creating the loop cuts for our valleys. I'm going to zoom in a little and press Control and R, add a loop cut there, and then hold Control and move it over 0 0.5. And we're going to do the same thing down here. Press Control and R to add the loop cut, hold Control, move it down to 0.5. These valleys that we're creating here are actually going to be twice as wide since we're mirroring it everywhere. And now we're going to create this valley here, which comes down and then starts to curve in a little. It doesn't go all the way down to the corner. So press the K key for the knife tool, click on that vertex there, and then that one, and then that one. So we've got a straight line so far, but now let's start to curve it inward. So place that vertex on that edge right about there, and then click on that vertex and press Enter. So we're done with that. Now it's just a line though. We're going to need to select all of these vertices and somehow make two loop cuts out of it, or two loops of edges. So to do that, we're going to use the bevel tool to split this into two lines. So press Control and B for the bevel tool, and then just scale that up. And you want to scale this up to the final size of your valley. We're going to need to stretch that to the final thickness we want that valley to be. And it creates a little bit of an issue right down here, but I'm just going to select all those vertices there, and press W, and select Merge at the center. And this also enables us to select these two triangles here and press the F key to make that a quad. So that's perfect, because now we can add, we can easily add loop cuts in the center of that. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to add some loop cuts. So press Ctrl and R, add a vertical one there, and right click to keep it in place. Do the same thing on the bottom. And add a loop cut in the middle of that. But now we're going to add two more. One there and one there. Perfect. Now select all of the interior loop cuts of the valleys, right like that. And now we're going to scale that in to actually create the depression for the valleys. And we're going to do that by scaling it towards the 3D cursor. So make sure your 3D cursor is at the center of your sphere. If it's not, get out of edit mode, press Shift and S, and select Cursor to Selected. That'll place the cursor on top of the origin point of the sphere. Right, so now we can scale this inward. But first, let's change the pivot point from this menu to the 3D cursor so it scales down towards the center of the sphere. Now simply press the S key and scale it in just a little bit. These depressions aren't that deep. And that's looking pretty hot. So it's easy enough to get the valleys in your sphere. And now we're going to create the rubber stripping that goes inside the valleys, which is really just as easy. 
Now to create the rubber stripping, let's go back into edit mode. And we're simply going to duplicate all the vertices we have selected. Press Shift and D, press Enter, and then press P to separate it. Now get out of edit mode and select our rubber stripping. And we can't really see it because they're both the same clay color. So let's go to the materials buttons and let's quickly give this a black material. We're going to end up rendering this in cycles, but for right now, I sometimes like to use the Blender renderer just for previewing. All right, so let's zoom in up here. And obviously, we got some intersections that we have to fix. So go into edit mode, select all the vertices, press S to scale it up, making sure that the 3D cursor is again at the center of the sphere still. So let's scale it up just so that the stripping is outside of the basketball. Perfect. Now let's select the interior edge loops, or the middle edge loops, I should say. And we're going to press S to scale that inward to give it some curvature. But don't go too far. Just stop before it starts to intersect. So that's looking good. Don't worry about these little dots here. We'll fix them later. All right, so uh, we got a little curve going now. Now I want to add some thickness to this stripping. So I'm going to select the outer edges. Good. And press the E key and then S key, which it will extrude it and then scale it down into the basketball. Good. Now since it's subsurfed, the edges here are being smoothed out a little bit too much. So we're going to need to create some geometry near the edges here to sharpen the detail or to sharpen that curvature. So press Control and R and add a loop cut there and move it up to about there. Do the same thing down here. Now I want the lips of these edges to stick out a little bit further. So press Control and R and add a loop cut between those two loops and then simply scale that up. And do the same thing down there. Perfect. And that is exactly what I want it to look like. Now we're going to need to do the same thing with the vertical strip and the horizontal. Add a loop cut near the edge, add a loop cut in the middle of those two, and scale it up. And one last time down here. Loop cut near the edge, another loop cut, scale it up. Almost perfect. We got some intersections here, and these ridges that we're going to get rid of as well. I'm going to select the middle loop cut there and press S to scale that up just a tiny, tiny bit so it's no longer intersecting. There we go. Now let's get rid of these ridges. They're kind of hard to see with the material being black, so I'm going to delete that material or just make it white for now. There we go. Now to get rid of these, you can see where they're coming from. There's some vertices here that are coming too far out when they shouldn't be. So press select those vertices, press G and then Y to move that backward to just flatten it out. And do the same thing anywhere you see them um, sticking out where you don't want them to. Now we can take this a step further and actually merge these together. I'm going to select those three, merge them at the center. Same thing with these, merge them at the center. Merge them at the center. Merge these two here. Merge these three, these three, and these two. And that's perfect. There's some intersecting going on. So I'm just going to select those vertices. Or is there? Yeah, a little bit. Scale them up just, just a smidge. Perfect. All right, and now do the same thing with all these vertices down here. And that's it. So there's our rubber stripping and our basketball. It was quite easy to create. And now select the basketball mesh again and go into edit mode. And let's create a few seams for when we UV unwrap this for texturing. And the cool thing about adding the rubber stripping is that it's going to hide the seams. So when we go to UV unwrap this, 
we're not going to be unwrapping a sphere. We'll be unwrapping it. We'll be unwrapping it in sections. So there's going to be minimum stretching. There's going to be no visible seams. It's going to be very carefree UV unwrapping and texturing. It's going to be great. So hold Alt and right click on that edge there to select that entire edge loop. And do the same thing with those edges there. Press Control and E and mark that as a seam. And that's it. Now before we actually unwrap this, I spotted a little issue. The lighting around the diagonal valleys is a little bit weird in a few areas. If you catch the light just right, you'll see what I mean. So let's go into edit mode and see why that might be. It's because of these triangles. They're the culprits. Triangles and subsurfing do not mix very well. So let's just simply get rid of the triangles and we can move on. I'm going to do that by selecting these two vertices pressing W and selecting merge at the center and just do the same for all the pairs of vertices below it until you reach the other side and that fixes the lighting issue but now the rubber stripping is sticking out a little bit too far so select the rubber stripping and we need to basically collapse this edge loop and this one together in the center we can do by that by adding a loop cut in the middle by pressing control and R and right clicking to keep it in place and then selecting the two surrounding edge loops pressing X and delete the edge loop and now the rubber stripping is snugly hugging the basketball again and go back into edit mode of the basketball and let's delete or let's get rid of this one last triangle here so do the same thing we did before merge all the pairs of vertices from one end to the other and fixing the rubber stripping afterward by adding a loop cut in the middle, selecting the surrounding loop cuts, press X and select edge loop. And that's it. There's another triangle down here, but it doesn't look like it's really doing much. So I'm going to leave that as is and move on to unwrapping this. So the first thing we're going to do before unwrapping this is go into, well, with the basketball selected, go into the modifiers buttons and apply the mirror modifier so that it's an entire sphere now and not just one single quadrant. And let me bring this window over here. I have the UV image editor window open. Select all of the vertices. Now press the U key and simply select unwrap. And based on the seams that we made, it unwrapped it in all these different sections. I'm not happy with the spacing. So I'm going to scale this up a little bit. So it's about like that move that down just like that and I'm gonna space everything out like that just to maximize the space of the texture map you don't really have to but I like to I don't like to waste a lot of space on the textures alright that looks good now the last thing left to do is go into the UVs menu and choose export UV layout and I'm going to export it as UV basketball.png at a scale of 2048 by 2048. And that does it for this part of the tutorial. The next part of the tutorial will include texturing and rendering in cycles. So I'll see you then.